Thanks, All right. All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our evening City Commission meeting. Um, hopefully you have agenda in front of you and you can follow along with the proceedings tonight. Um, as I call this meeting to order, I'm going to ask you to join me for a moment of silence before we go to the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next we will have roll call. <coughs> Commissioner Ruppart? Here. Commissioner Moody? Present. Commissioner Present. Kelly? Here. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner O'Connor? Present. Commissioner Lanier? Present. Mayor Bliss? <laughs> yes. All right, next up will take us to our first opportunity for public comment tonight. Uh, and if you are new to our meetings, I'll kind of walk you through the agenda. We have a couple opportunities for public comment. The very first one is public comment on action items that we took up earlier today. So they're agenda items. So on your commission agenda, you'll see a whole host of issues that the commission talked about earlier today with some of our in some of our earlier meetings. So if you are here to speak on one of those items, I'm going to open up that opportunity for public comment momentarily. And then we have a scheduled public hearing tonight so if you are here uh, to be heard uh, to speak on subjects oh let's see where am I oh it's a special assessment nuisance role so if you are here to speak uh, for a special assessment nuisance role 8744 I'm going to ask you to stay put until I open up the opportunity for public comment and then at the end of the meeting you'll be able to come up and speak about anything else that is on your mind that is not on the agenda or not part of the nuisance role um, so I'll open up this first opportunity for public comment a couple of rules for public comment we ask that you share your name the city that you live in uh, we'll give you up to three minutes to speak you can look at the timer right here Yes, Mr. Davis, I see that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, we ask that you put your name over there on a clipboard, and that's really just for uh, recording purposes. Uh, and then for the first public comment uh, period. Oh, no Mr. Miller. Board. Oh, there's no, no clipboard. clipboard. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Miller, for telling us. The clerk will get on that right away. Thank you. Uh, so for the, and welcome back. We haven't seen you in a while. Uh, and so the, the first <laughs> opportunity uh, where you're talking about something we voted on earlier, we just ask that you let us know which item you're talking about. So if it's under appointments committee, you can say appointments committee item two. If it's under committee of the whole, you can point to that item just so we can follow along. Um, so we'll go, you can sign your name on the clipboard once it's over there. Uh, but I'll go ahead and open up the first opportunity for public comment. Uh, so Mr. Miller, were you coming up to speak? Was. Okay, come on up. Good evening, fellow citizens uh, uh, and veterans. This is the uh, House of the People, Watchdog Miller reporting 9C5. That's the GRF uh, freeway. Uh, you want uh, 360 grand. Uh, uh, that's going to kill, uh, further kill city bus service. Un it's unfair competition. Another congressman involved who doesn't have an express name, Nick Rostenkowski, uh, Ways and Means Rosty, well, when he had the opportunity to uh, widen the Kennedy uh, in Chicago, he said, no, no more lanes, auxiliary lane maybe, but no more traffic lanes to save uh, the CTA and Northwestern service in that corridor. So uh, this should be reexamined. Uh, number two, uh, D2, uh, and D2, uh, how many houses are involved? You're gonna, uh, I, I thought at one time I heard 4,000, uh, maybe 400, uh, it's an awful lot of houses. The county has totally dis, dis, uh, owned this program, uh, the, f the former program, and uh, how many houses are involved? That's, uh, that's D2. Uh, third, uh, two, $2 million uh, for uh, uh, compost. Uh, it's you know it's a lot of compost. Uh, uh, we need m money for other things around the city. Uh, that's uh, nine. Moving ahead or or back. Uh, seven one. Uh, you have a, a an appointee or or actually a resignation. 
T H E I R. I went to school forever under nuns, Franciscans, and never tell us what they're. What is that all about? It was an excellent way to hide, to conceal all the sexist, feminist, uh, sexist supremacists you're, you're packing on these boards, and kindly put down his or, or her. And you, you have a prior commission and resolutions on that. You're supposed to be breaking down by by gender. Nine A two. Again, uh, to Neil Harkness, uh, to Dashboard, you call it a mobile GR. Basically, they're in business to demobilize us with their policies, but what are her programs and qualifications? Why is she being appointed? Uh, down to uh, baby wearing uh, B7, 9B7, what's that? They, they need to run bingo, or what? Why are they being elevated, ascending to becoming a full-blown civic organization? Uh, next on 6th Street, uh, I can't quite place it. There's a 6th Street Hall in there, a very fine Polish hall across the street. And uh, 12000 bucks doesn't seem to be very, very much money. Uh, D4, no backsliding, please, on uh, pothead uh, profiteering. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. And the clipboard's there now. All right, anyone else wishes to be heard on items that we're voting on tonight? Hi, welcome. Hi, my name is LaDonna Norman, and um, I want to bring, uh, what is it? Sorry. The State Land Bank and the resolution for the State Land Bank um, for affordable housing. My concern with that is we really haven't tackled what actually affordable housing is. And right now, we need some prevention in there. This sounds good, but this is not something that's going to happen right away. People are calling the city of Grand Rapids. They are calling um, fair housing. I just don't understand how this is going to work and how we're going to trust you when all the greed does is recycle here. You had the Kent County Land Bank. You sold half of Grand Rapids. Now you want to assure us that with the state land bank that something good is going to come out of that. I have a problem with that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Norman. All right, others who wish to be heard on items that we're voting on? Yeah, you can come on up. My name is Martha Cooper, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, so I didn't get a chance to look up uh, the agenda. But I, I did a real quick one as soon as my friend here, who's been asking for affordable housing, uh, along with me for the last couple of years. Um, and so I wanted to point out that uh, we still, the citizens, really don't know what happened with the land bank. And it was pretty weird how it all happened, um, with it shutting down just before Christmas and with what was going on that I understood uh, with our commissioner resigning to run it, and then suddenly all of these properties are showing, and, and, and uh, virtually they called them manufactured homes, but they look like motor homes. Anyway, I know I'm running out of time. So the thing is, is we don't really know what happened to the properties or the money. Never mind who's running the thing. We don't care if anybody goes to jail. What I'd like is the money to put into some affordable housing where elderly and, and uh, under 30% of AMI, AMI is inflated. I've spoken to that to you for a long time because of our income inequality with the medical. There's not enough jobs to call a lot of people middle class. And you said affordable 80%, which is $32,000. And there are a lot of two pe people out here in this audience that can't even listen to stuff that we are being presented about the business districts because they're so concerned about their neighborhoods being intact and their taxes not raising. Okay, we're at the, the tail end of what we can stand. I'm going to be having my teeth out before you all do anything, and I don't want to come up here like that. So I'm going to ask you for something that works and has been proven to work, and I hope that people in the audience will look it up. It's called a land trust. Four, we four weeks ago, at one of these meetings, the head of 
Mr. Verweese from ICCF ask you to put 140 homes they got back from a developer into a land trust so they'd be permanently affordable, not for five years until they revert to what you all are calling fair market. But it's not fair when the state of Michigan doesn't have any rent control and they can raise it two or $300. That's not, nothing about fair. That's pushing people out. It's harming lives. And you're doing it where you're pushing black people out of formerly redlined areas and putting in nothing, nothing. So there's no competition. So any landlord can raise it $200 and $300 and get it. Because if you have to move, no other places are going to be that cheap. This is unjust. The last time I was here, you had five, six seconds I got to tell you that those five houses that you plan to sell after the city pays to fix them up out of the land bank should also go into the land trust. And Martha, I will finish Martha, my damn up. sentence. Uh, your time's up. Thanks. Thank you. The land trust. Any, anyone else who wishes to be heard on items that we're voting on tonight? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to. Sir, are you going to speak? I'll just marry. Is this the time for comment on uh, special assessment nuisance? No, I'm going to open that up uh, in a little bit. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, if you're here to, uh, to speak on the nuisance role, uh, I ask you just to stay put and I'll open up that public hearing in just a little bit after we get through a number of items. Okay. All right. So, next, that will take us back to approval of the minutes and these are minutes from our last meeting which which occurred on september 24th can i get a motion so moved. support all right commissioners any questions or comments all right all those in favor say aye aye, aye. those opposed it carries all right next that will take us to petitions and communications um, just one this evening a communication <laughs> from vanessa eddy regarding the resignation from the south down corridor improvement authority that is referred to committee on appointments and then next, that will take us to reports of city officers. Uh, the first one's a comptroller's report for the period of September 12, 2019 through September 25, 2019, in the amount of $27,604,404.62. That is received and filed. And the second one is treasurer's report for the period of September 7, 2019 through September 20, 2019. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda and reports from our committee meetings. So these are items that we talked about earlier today in one of our committee meetings and where the vote was unanimous. So tonight with one voice vote, we'll adopt those items. Uh, but I believe my colleague wants to remove one item from consent. I do. So I move to approve um, excluding D2. Support. All right. All those in favor of the consent agenda uh, with pulling off D2, say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, that will take us to the items removed com from consent, and that is the resolution amending the city commission policy for, did I get that right? Mm -mm. The wi no, I'm sorry. D2, I read the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the resolution authorizing an agreement with the state land bank authority for land banking services. Can I get a motion? So move. Support. Support. All right, so uh, we, we talked about this item earlier today at Committee of the Whole um, at length, um, but it's a really important item, and so my colleague on the commission, Commissioner Lanier, asked us to take it off so we could have a conversation about it tonight, so I'll turn to you first, uh, yeah. and then I'll see if uh, Mr. DeLong wants to add anything. Absolutely, <coughs> Mayor. So I think, you know, what we had talked about earlier was to try and have as many housing discussions as possible in the evening because we frequently have um, housing advocates, which we've just seen in, in um, our public comment period, um, coming and wanting to know what it is that we're doing. And so I thought that um, it would be a good time to um, pull this contract and talk a little bit more in depth about what it is that we're doing with the state land bank. And city manager, if you don't mind, um, it would be great to kind of have some closure about the um, King County land bank too, you know, just a brief um, blurb about the closure of that because I think we've had that discussion but it was held at 930 and it's probably would be a good time since that came up during public comment too. Yeah, thank you Commissioner. Uh, so, uh, Commissioner Rapar who, who serves on our land bank, uh, the Kent County Land Bank as it winds down, do you want to speak to this? Yeah, sure. And I, I unfortunately Ms. Cooper has left I think but um, you know the Kent County Commission Board of Commissions voted to shut down the land bank. That was a decision that then we had to reel from. And uh, right shortly after that, I was appointed to serve on the board. And where, where are the properties going to go, where the monies go? Those are fair questions to ask. 
uh, the money, there was, there's not a lot of money in the land bank. Um, they are wrapping up a few projects and those will be completed, I believe, by the end of October. Um, and then uh, whatever money's left, if there is any money left, which it's unlikely that there will be, uh, that would go back to the county, not to us. Um, but the properties will go to us and then we're, we've got this agreement with the land bank, that it, the state land bank that is gonna help us to to make that transition a lot more smoothly if then if they, we had to do it on our own. But for the sake of wrapping it up, really everything Kent County Land Bank related will be buttoned up by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. um, they're finishing up about 10 projects around, the, around the, the city and those will be completed and then they will close out the books and uh, you know their bylaws and all those things so that money will get redistributed according to their bylaws. But the properties, you know, we have great agreements in place, fortunately, that will allow those to stay within the city of Grand Rapids. Uh, and I'll, I'll add, uh, for those in the audience that aren't familiar with this topic, uh, the Kent County is a separate elected body, and uh, they have the authority to both create a land bank as well as dissolve one. So they created the land bank. Actually, I see one of our county commissioners in the audience tonight, Commissioner Womack. Thank you for your service. Uh, they have the authority to create one, and they did that a number of years ago during the economic downturn when we had hundreds of properties going into foreclosure uh, and really significant blight in a number of our communities and neighborhoods. Uh, and then at the end of last year, after uh, uh, internal assessment of where we are today, they made the decision to dissolve the land bank. And then that triggered we had 12 months, the county land bank had 12 months to wind down. And um, since that decision back in December, we have been working really hard to figure out what we're gonna do because at the time we had over 160 properties in the city um, under the control of the land bank. So that initiated a conversation that we started with the state land bank uh, to see if we could partner with them to continue to use the tools. So with that history, I'll turn Thank it over you. to Mr. I'll, I'll pick up the story there. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so we, we have used the Kent County Land Bank. They've been a, a valuable partner and have helped us in the affordable housing mission that we're, that we're working on. And they've, uh, without a land banking, what we determined is without a land banking function, we wouldn't be as effective or able to uh, do the work that we need to do in this, in this important area. And so we, after we um, learned of the decision of the Kent County Board of Commissioners, we began looking for alternatives. Uh, the, one of the first alternatives we looked at was whether we could form our own city of Grand Rapids land bank, which would have been the preferred alternative, but we're precluded from, by state law from doing that. And, uh, and that's, uh, there's one city in the state that can do that, and that is the city of Detroit, and there's a special classification that they have. It has to do with the type of school district uh, that they happen to have within the city. Um, and so we can't do that ourselves. So we needed to find another alternative, and that alternative is to work on an agreement with the, Kent, with the state land bank to replicate the services that the Kent County Land Bank was doing for us. And uh, the, the state land bank has been very open and very uh, willing to work with us and work on, I think, an innovative agreement that will help us maintain land banking services in the uh, community. So uh, you might ask, what are land banking services? What important things do they do for us? So uh, things like quiet title. So when a property goes through foreclosure, there may be title issues. Uh, the land bank is set up by state law to be able to get a clean title so that when the property comes back, we can actually, there's a transaction that can happen that will, will provide good title to the uh, new buyer. Uh, they can land bank properties and hold them until we can find a way to redevelop them for affordable housing or other, for other uses. They also do maintenance, and so home, we want to make sure that the homes are, that are in the land bank, and this is something that Kent County Land Bank did very well, what, they mow the grass, they make sure it's secure, they plow the snow in the wintertime so the sidewalks are clear and people can walk by. They do all the things that a, that a owner would do to make sure that the property is um, well maintained. They, uh, in this uh, agreement, they'll also continue to collaborate with, with the city on redevelopment, so with our Brownfield Authority and other um, organs of the city that help to do redevelopment. In this agreement with the State Land Bank, we'll, we have um, really, uh, I think, flexible agreements between uh, about how properties can move between the city and the land bank back and forth. <clears throat> and a question was asked this morning, you know, do we have the right to uh, control the use? 
and the way we would control the use is by um, they, we have basically a right of first refusal. And so if the state land bank comes to us and says, we want to do this and we don't want that to be done, then we have the option to say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll just buy that property and um, we'll, we'll just move on. And so there are, I think it's a really good agreement and I think it will service very well. So the one nuance or difference between how the Kent County Land Bank worked and how the state land bank will work is that we will be paying holding costs or those costs that I talked about for mowing and snow plowing and those kind of activities up front and then will be reimbursed over time as properties are sold. And uh, in the old, with the county land bank, those costs were all assumed by the Kent County Land Bank and uh, they were basically, uh, we didn't have to account for them. So uh, we have the dollars um, available to us in the property management fund for the first year. And in the future, uh, we expect that we'll be using affordable housing community fund dollars to help pay those holding costs. And those are estimated at about $70,000 per year. But again, there'll be some reimbursement of those costs as we move forward. Uh, the mayor mentioned how many properties the Kent County Land Bank had in, um, in uh, just January of this year. Now there are about 145, so the, the number has been whittled down. And to Commissioner Reparts' point, I know that they're working to close out other projects. Um, and actually, our, our wind down process with them has been very, very good. They've been very open, they're very willing to, uh, to help the wind down go well. And they've been really good partners right up to the end, and, and we really appreciate that. So when they're done winding up, there'll be properties left over. Those properties will either come to us and then go to the state land bank, or we may be able to work it where they just go right from the county land bank to the state land bank. So they could, could go either way. And then the land, state land bank will work with us to administer that property inventory. So we've had a lot of help along the way. Um, Jeff Huntington, the interim director of the state land bank, has been exceedingly helpful, and his staff has been very good to work with. Um, our staff, Amber Beebe, Jonathan Kluster, um, and many others have worked to help make this happen. So I think we're in, in good shape with this arrangement, and I think uh, this will um, take what was uh, a, a very um, uh, treacherous situation and turn it into um, a good situation. Yeah, thank, thank you, Eric. And I'll add, I know some of us, myself, as city manager, Commissioner Jones, uh, went uh, back in March, I believe, to a uh, state land bank authority board, and um, we really had a great conversation at that time with the members of the board and then also the staff, and I appreciate them working so closely with us. Um, I will add this is a separate item, but we also approved today um, a brownfield plan amendment to work with uh, a number of our nonprofit organizations to also develop some affordable housing. So there's a, there's a number of different uh, issues that we're working on around affordable housing, and this is this is one of of actually quite a few. Right. And Mayor, if I might add to the point you made about the brownfield and the five houses, <clears throat> those uh, with those five, we're up to 200 or more homes that we've assisted with the brownfield plan. Yeah. So, and those are all affordable homes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing that out, uh, Commissioner. Just a, a couple quick follow-up questions, Eric, and they're uh, mostly questions we've talked about either this morning or other times when we've talked about the um, state land bank. Um, the King County Land Bank would put the homes on the MLS. I know they also work with the local nonprofits. Um, so, you know, if you could speak to whether the state will do this, the same. And then um, we had the affordability component as well as um, the lead remediation component. That was a recent add-on for the um, Kent County Land Bank. And if you could sure. speak to whether those are going to be similar. And I think the last one that we've talked about, um, well, something else that came up as you were speaking, but one of them was someone has come um, and asked about the um, auctions. Um, so when we started using the Kent County Land Bank um, the option for citizens to go to a public auction to buy their own home um, went away. And so um, I know we've talked about why um, that change was made and the benefits from that. So if you could speak to that. And then I, finally, I know the Kent County Land Bank had um, a lot of good relationships with local um, vendors for their maintenance. And so I'm curious to know if 
we're kind of transferring some of that information. Um, Commissioner Ruppart, as you guys are dissolving the Kent County Land Bank over to the state so they can already know kind of, you know, local first is a priority for us too as they're looking for vendors, I'm assuming, to, sure. to do maintenance. Well, so some things are going to change as we as we move forward, and uh, you know, so the contractual relationships really are up to them. We can provide them with um, advice. They have a contract for maintenance already okay. that they're using around the state, and I think initially, at least, they'll be relying on that vendor that they have a proven relationship with to do do most of that work. In terms of, I'm kind of hopefully going backwards, and I won't forget the last couple That's of questions, fine. and you can remind me if I do. Please. Um, so in terms of the auction, uh, actually the, um, the way that we're doing the foreclosures were to um, assure that homes um, found their way to uh, not-for-profits for affordable redevelopment. Mm -hmm. And so um, because before uh, they, it was, it was kind of spotty, you know, it didn't always happen. Uh, a lot of you know, auctions uh, it can uh, work out really well. Mm -hmm. um, for a community or they can work out really badly. And so we decided to, uh, to intervene and to have the, use the land bank as the repository for homes until we could put them into good use. So this uh, does not um, intend to, to you know, rekindle the auction. Okay. Uh, so um, I imagine that properties could potentially be put on the MLS at some point in time, but um, you know, I, don't want to, I don't want to presuppose that. So, um, then moving on to um, I'll talk to you about affordable housing, so on affordable housing persons. Um, so what am I missing from your Lead. questions? Lead. Lead, okay. So, um, well, part of what the, f the five homes were about in the use of the brownfield is about lead remediation. And so that's a, a part of every, I think it would be a part of every project that we do. Okay. So. Great. Yeah. Thank Did you. Anything? None. No. Good job. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And and I will add. And Commissioner, I likely still have this in one of my files. Uh, you know, I was around this table when we decided to um, move forward with uh, with moving away from the auction, and we had a lot of really good data that showed that um, one, the auction you had to have cash on hand. You, you, it was sight unseen, so you didn't have an opportunity to walk through the property. And so a lot of properties were purchased um, with cash, and then the buyer would see them and see that they were in, in pretty poor condition, and they would sit on the rolls for another three years and then go back. So we had really good data about how many properties came back through the through the yeah. auction process because of foreclosure, and, and then they would sit blighted in a community for mm -hmm. three, six, nine years. And so we had good data on that, and then we also had really good data on the number of code violations uh, so we were able to identify all of the, I think we went back seven years, if I recall, yep. and we were able to identify the hundreds of houses that went through the auction, and then we were able to pull, I believe, this is from memory, it's a long time ago, but I believe it was over 4,000 code violations um. on that batch of properties. Uh, and so we were able to really clearly uh, show the negative impact on community with how that process was occurring and the lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. And we used that data when we were challenged with making that decision to pull the properties for a public purpose. Um, but that, that history, since some of you weren't around the table when we decided it, some of that history would likely be helpful. Yeah, and I know that um, with the method that the Kent County Land Bank um, started to use, um, home, home ownership became more of a priority <coughs> than um, the increase in rental prop or rental yeah. units, I should yeah. say. So that was, I think, another component that fared well for um, not having the auction. So, so they, that you're absolutely right. Homeownership was a priority, and um, for the first, uh, I believe, 20, 21 or 28 days, um, the properties were really targeted to low-income families. Families, yeah. yeah. Great. Thank yeah. you, Mayor. Yeah, you're welcome. <coughs> All right, any other questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner? Yeah, I just want to thank Commissioner Lanier for bringing this up because I think one of the questions we're getting has to do with how many houses are coming on the market. And to know that over 200 homes were um, put back on the market through this process is important. We also had a conversation this morning in a, a presentation by the Housing Commission. That's not an agenda item, but we did talk about given the fact that people are coming to learn about what the city is doing, 
that it would be good to put out at least their website information so that people can look that up. We are working with the Housing Commission. Mm -hmm. it, it used to be part of the city and it was taken out of our um, authority years ago really because of NIMBYism, mm -hmm. not in my backyard. So uh, the federal government intervened and took it out, but we are still um, partners with them in many respects. So, and at one point, uh, our community development department put out uh, a flyer for people too that showed how many houses were coming on board through the community <coughs> development block grant funds, and I think it's time to perhaps revisit those numbers as well so that we can have something to hand out to people who come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one last request, Eric, or maybe um, Commissioner Apart, you can follow up on this. <clears throat> I think it would be nice to have an overall summary of the impact of the land bank from the work that they did do um, over the entirety of their of their lifespan, I should say. Uh, but it would be nice, especially, I know they've, they've done work outside of the city, but specific to the city, it would be nice to have a full summary of the number of houses and projects they worked on, how many went to homeowners, affordable, how many, you know, it'd be nice to have that broken down. I'll see if I can get it. Okay, yeah. great, thanks. Okay, with that, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, commissioners, next that will take us to ordinances to be adopted, and we have two ordinances before us tonight. We'll start with the first one. First one is an ordinance amending section one of the budget mm -hmm. ordinance 2019-19 for fiscal year 2020, amendment number six. All right, can I get a motion? Some votes. Support. Support. All right, Commissioner O'Connor, who is with our fiscal committee, you wanna tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a, a lot of good uh, grants uh, received today. One uh, fire department grant here uh, from the Federal Emergency Management and Homeland Security uh, to help with fire prevention and safety. Um, the chief mentioned today that we've received over $12 million in grants over the last 10 years from the good work of our <coughs> grant writing team over there at the fire department. So that's, uh, that's pretty exceptional value for our citizens. Uh, we have a COPS grant, uh, 2016, we're just recognizing for two positions, one uh, that works with the Department of Corrections on female prisoner reentry, and another one uh, that helps support a code enforcement officer in our planning uh, or development center. Uh, some uh, Metro Enforcement Team and Auto uh, Theft Prevention Authority grants, uh, a public sa a safety answering grant, uh, and then we have uh, $1.3 million for our uh, lead hazard chip program, which is great to help uh, with the lead concern mm -hmm. that we continue to talk about in our community here. And then uh, just some <coughs> transfers uh, between funds for uh, both major and local streets, just aligning some dollars from our Vital Streets Fund and some of the other projects we have going on. And we do not use any of our contingent balance. Great, and before I ask our clerk to do a roll call vote, I, I don't see uh, Chief Lehman in the audience tonight, um, but I just wanna point out in regards to the first grant for the fire department, I was able to attend a press conference where we notified the community that we have installed over 60,000 smoke detectors throughout our community with our fire prevention program. Uh, and this grant allows us to continue that work. So uh, I just wanna give a shout out to our fire department who are out there um, through really throughout our entire city working to make sure that we're preventing fires and saving lives. So it's a great grant. All right, with that, we'll go to a roll call vote. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Rephart? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. <coughs> and can I get a motion to give that immediate effect? Well, support. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? It carries. All right, next that'll take us to our second ordinance to be adopted tonight. It's an ordinance adopting Chapter 105 of Title 7 of the City Code entitled Marijuana Related Municipal Licensing. All right, can I get a motion? Support. All right, Commissioner Jones, you want to tell us about this? Yep, Mayor, the uh, ordinance provides uh, for the adoption of Chapter 105 Marijuana Related Munis Municipal Licensing of Title 7, Licensing and Regulation of the Code of the City of Grand Rapids. The State of Michigan will begin accepting license applications <laughs> For recreational marijuana uses authorized under the Michigan Regula Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act, also known as MRTMA, on November 1st, 2019. A municipality must have an ordinance regulating recreational marijuana uses in effect no later than November 1st, 2019 in order to avoid a default opt-in status while lacking reasonable regulations on marijuana uses. The proposed ordinance before us would require local license for and allow the operation of all marijuana facilities licensed under the Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act, also known as MMFLA, and the MRTMA. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any questions or comments? I know we've talked about this at length. Uh, this is the license in place, and then it'll give us time to work out the details uh, for the recreational marijuana. 
All right, there's a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. All right, and colleagues, we don't have any uh, resolutions tonight, so that will take us to our scheduled public hearings. Uh, so this, uh, we have a public hearing tonight uh, for the Special Assessment Nuisance Rule 8744. So for individuals seeking an appeal, this elected body acts as the review board tonight. Uh, so this public hearing is gonna be for only for those who are asking for an appeal. So we'll start off tonight by uh, giving uh, Ms. Grivens a chance to give us a briefing on this, and then we'll open it up for public comment, and are you gonna be in room 901? 901, yes. Okay, uh, and then uh, if you have additional questions or need additional support, then we'll have staff over in room 901 to help you with that. So, hello, welcome. Thank you. The City Commission is acting as the Board of Review to hear appeals on charges levied on special assessment. Nuisance rule number 8744. Charges on the roll are comprised of past due billings during the period from January 1st 2019 through June 30th, 2019. The special assessment role includes charges for violations related to <coughs> refuse, weeds, snow removal, inoperable vehicles, blight, rental property certification, housing violations, and other code violations. At the time of the hearing on necessity <laughs> held on August 13th, there existed uh, 1,700 charges totaling $420,894. Payments made after the hearing on necessity have reduced the total amount of charges to $372,348. So property owners were sent notices on August 22nd, notified of the charge and the appeal process. The special assessment role has been open for public inspection for the last two weeks, starting um, for at least two weeks, starting September 9th through today. And the assessor's office has received 15 appeals to date. So tonight is the final opportunity to file an appeal for these charges. Appeals must be made in writing on forms, and I'll be in room 901, and my um, deputy city assessor will also be there, Shell Coyman, um, to assist those uh, wishing to file an appeal. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So if you are here tonight to be heard, and I, I believe this gentleman up front in the suit uh, this is what you're here for tonight, so I'll let you go first. And then um, anyone else, we ask you to come forward. Same rules apply. We ask that you share your name, the city that you live in, and then put your name over there on the clipboard. So, hi, hi welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Tim Dudley. I'm here on behalf of Processing Solutions. Processing Solutions owns a parcel of real property on the corner of Ellsworth and Granville. Uh, they were assessed following... Uh, failure to clear snow and ice from the sidewalk along Ellsworth Avenue. Um, I've submitted a cover letter and uh, supporting materials in support of our position. I don't have anything further to add uh, to that, uh, but essentially um, the ordinance provides that uh, property owners are responsible for clearing snow and ice uh, from a sidewalk adjoining the parcel, and in this case, the sidewalk uh, does not actually adjoin the parcel. So here, to, happy to answer any questions if you have any, or else I'll uh, uh, take a seat. Great, thank you. thank you. Thank you. Would you like him to go to room, uh, Mr. Dudley, to go? He's already filed. Oh, okay, okay, great. Thank you. All right, others who wish to be heard. All right, seeing none, I'm gonna close that opportunity for public comment and that will be referred back to our committee, our community development committee. All right, so this will take us to our last opportunity for public comment tonight. And this is, uh, you can come up and speak about anything uh, other than what we've already talked about tonight or you can add on to what you said earlier. So you can share anything that's on your heart and mind. Same rules apply, we ask that you share your name, the city that you live in, and we'll give you up to three minutes to speak. I'm so tired of coming in here talking to y'all. I'm going to speak as a mom because I know some of y'all are not mothers and parents tonight, all right? But what a mother goes through for her children, you will never know. I've been up since 6 a.m. I've taken care of my family. I've went to work, and now I'm trying to take care of my community being here. 
we have a lot of things going on. You guys, sound, everything sounds good on paper when they come up here and talk about the Kent County Land Bank and the state land bank, but there are some things that are immediate. Like what kind of psychological and mental counseling are these parents receiving from the trauma from being displaced? You guys sit up here and you, you look at us like you don't even care, like you don't even have a heart. The homelessness has not gotten better here. The children, man, these children are a nervous wreck. Some of these parents are sleeping in cars with their kids. But like I said, what, what parents do is, is something we do when we have to do it. There's a lot of parents doing what they have to do so they don't have to lose their kids. And there are a lot of parents that just hand their kids over to the state. What are you putting in place now? It's about to be cold in five minutes. Has anybody thought about the warming stations for the homeless? It all sounds good on paper, and I told you I'll still be here when the audience is gone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Norman. All right, others wish to be heard? I'm David Davis. I live on the northwest side of Grand Rapids. I've been here many times about the trash on the city streets and so forth. I participated in the mayor's river cleanup, and uh, since then I've noticed that uh, some of the areas that were cleaned up have gone back to what they were before and even worse. Again, we have to do something about the people that uh, are doing this to our city, throwing their trash around and that. And uh, it has to do with your own self-esteem that you take care of your place where you live. And I hope that the people of Grand Rapids will do likewise as I do. I clean up as I walk along the sidewalks and streets. and. Uh, it, if everybody did just a little bit of cleanup, it would be a great help to keeping our city presentable to guests that come to our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Never feel too excited to walk up here. I, I got, I had to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to my auntie Tanil. I'm very proud of her being appointed to that committee. That's pretty cool. Um, Earlier I was at the city commission meeting and I seen that the city was actually about to create an advisory board for affordable housing if I'm, or something like that or uh, um, something about affordable housing and that uh, you guys were uh, about to start working with like Section 8 homes and things like that. Uh, how is, <clears throat> how is it, um, when will you guys actually start the applications? Will the city... Uh, be putting that information up there because it's a lot of people that talks about affordable housing and people having Section 8 vouchers and wanted to uh, be able to, um, I've never heard of um, Section 8, um, somebody being on Section 8 uh, potentially becoming a homeowner. So I just want to know what's the possibility of people, you know, for the people that weren't there, like what type of, um, when would that uh, be available. I know everybody's not going to be able to get a seat, but I know that's available, and um, I know there's a there will be a lot of meetings coming up for that. That's something I'm very passionate about. Um, I'm sure it's a lot of people from Link Up and um, hearing that a lot. So I just wanted to bring a little bit of awareness to that that there's about to be something in place where people can actually um, get some type of affordable housing. And uh, also, please, when you guys are going over the recreational spaces, to please do the uh, designated consumption lounge. I would like to make a coffee bar or something like that, but something classy, you know, because I'm very classy, and I like to show that. I like to show my creativity. That would be pretty cool, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, DeAndre. All right, others wish to be heard. Hello, Commissioner. Welcome. Oh, Mr. Peterson. Hi. Yes. My name is Bill Peterson. I live on Cherry Street. When I have occasion to talk to people from the city, I would like to be able to get a written confirmation of what we talked about. Is that possible? I would say yes, I believe so. Okay, and then if I was unable to get that, who would I complain to? <laughs> Mr. Um, Peterson, I'm going to have one of my staff members uh, follow up with you. We, it depends on the nature of the interaction, whether or not there will be a written follow-up. So do, if you submitted something in writing, we should respond in writing. But if you made a call, they don't necessarily have to respond in writing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. It's on to you. Okay. Welcome. 
Hello, Mayor. Good to see you and the rest of the commission. Just want to thank you for your service and the thankless duties that you do daily. Just letting you know I recognize all your hard work and I'm very supportive of what you do. What brings me here today, I'm part of a neighborhood association called Sika Southeast Community Association. It's been here about 40 years. Um, and we continue to have meetings. Sometimes when people come to our meetings, they're surprised that so many young people in the neighborhood still come to our meetings. But because of the violence, that's one of the reasons we're here today. At one of our last neighborhood meetings, the young men brought up um, violence and, and what they could do about it. So we continue to have meetings about stop the violence and just being two African-American males here, me, an older one with uh, one of the young guys that represents some of the young guys in our neighborhood. Um, it just, we, just here to say we know we're endangered species. And we understand that when people are on their way home in the southeast side of Grand Rapids in 07 where we live, their parents are praying for them just to be able to walk from the store. There's a national news story where there was an African-American U.S. veteran that was shot in the face for $40 that they robbed. And that's just been on the news, not in Grand Rapids, but I lost two friends to gun violence in the last month. And as the guys start saying, what could we do? I said, it's good because it starts with these young guys. It starts with our community. It starts with us. But I definitely want to start bringing them around downtown, letting them know that it's not a blame game, but together we can uh, somehow find a solution to some of the violence. I don't know if we'll ever be able to stop it all, but I just want to say I want to salute those young men in the neighborhood who are making the effort, and I look forward to introducing them to more of you downtown. And uh, just a uh, shout out to our law enforcement. They uh, provided some excellent protection at the African American Festival that went peacefully and was great. And I thank the community, because the community came out peacefully. But we just look to partner with as many people as we can so we can save some lives. Because living in the 07, when we see it, it's not just a number. Those are our friends, our nephews, our cousins, our brothers, our sisters. A lot of young women were shot by stray bullets. And uh, once again, we recognize the work that you're doing, and our neighborhood association just wants to partner and help any way we can to stop the violence and save some lives. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks. All right, anyone else who wishes to be heard tonight? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close that opportunity for public comment, and I'm going to turn down here to my colleagues. All right, Mr. Miller, I'm going to let you come this time. Next time, I want you to come on up like we've talked about in the past, OK? All right. You'll be the last one. This is the House of the People, Watch Dog Miller back, uh, reporting. Hit Chicago yesterday on some some errands, and uh, Chicago Sun-Times still only cost a buck, whereas our paper, uh, only New York City, is a buck fifty. Thirty-two pages of sports in there. Here, in the, Mr. Miller, go, go ahead and talk to us. Uh, Thirty-two yeah. pages of sports in there. Uh, uh, and their philosophy is start people out reading on the sports, the young guys, and they'll get more involved in the rest of the sections as they, they grow older. Uh, ne next, uh, I, I received uh, your, uh, through some slip up, they're sending me your election uh, literature. Uh, the last one before this was they had a big, and one of your uh, slogans is, is neighborhoods, but what neighborhood bus comes here, you know? and. As Commissioner Womack eloquently testified, if you kindly get these bus routes back, black bus routes, one, two, three, four, five, fourteen, the nineteen, and Commissioner Womack was flat out stolen from Madison Square. Catholic routes going up Chicago get to count to fourteen twice. That would be seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and eighteen. Uh, the fourteen started out Catholic. Uh, uh, clearly, Mary Wood Aquinas, Thomas Apostle, uh, Catholic Social Services, Corner Jefferson, and Cath Catholic Information Center. These buses don't come downtown. You also advertise seniors. It was a big block in, in your, uh, well, but what programs do you have? I mean, you're, you're still charging seniors uh, 
uh, fares for riding the buses, your neighborhood uh, metros, Ann Arbor, Chicago, and so on, Holland, Zealand, the MAC system. Is, fares are free for senior citizens. I don't say, claim I need it myself, but I just think it would be a very good program to give seniors more of a sense of belonging in the bus system. So here in your last literature, I figured out what your solution is. Uh, that's you in a canoe there. And uh, your, your program for getting our buses back is uh, go kayak yourselves, uh, veterans. Your buses, city buses, are never going to come back. Uh, so this is very well put. And, uh, and then on the other side, you're some very young children. But what, what position will they be a couple years from now? If they're in GRPS uh, city buses, those bus, uh, buses are insanely, inhumanely overpacked. We need double-decker buses. Uh, build them in the old bus plant in Flint. And uh, then beyond that, the bu buses will, will be forced to go to Central Station with your primitive, primitive uh, uh, plumbing, uh, pr primitive pr prison plumbing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Appreciate your feedback. All right, so with that, I'm going to close that opportunity for public comment, and I'll turn to my colleagues up here, and I'll start down here with Commissioner Park. Yeah, thanks, everybody. I'll make sure to get that information about the Kent County Land Bank, and I had another idea as well during the meeting, because I think you're right, Commissioner Lanier, we can tell those stories a bit more uh, publicly about how we're impacting affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Commissioner Moody? Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for coming out and to just inform you that we do hear everything that you say. And I want to give kudos out to the uh, 311 crew of the city. They take a lot of information and they receive a lot of calls and they take a lot of hits on our behalf. And I just want to thank Becky Jo uh, for her staff and what they do because uh, they really helped me out over a number of different situations with community people who have had issues. So the city is doing some good stuff and we don't take it lightly. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Kelly? I, too, want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. <clears throat> Drive home safely. It's getting dark. We've got some announcements that we've been making now about watching, your, being careful when you cross the street because it's dark. And So have a good evening and, and stay safe. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Thank you, Mayor. I just want to be um, happy to see the turnout on this evening and appreciate those who had words as well as those who were just present. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioner yeah. O'Connor? Um, first, I want to commend my colleague, uh, Commissioner Jones, for his uh, very thoughtful article that he uh, submitted to our local uh, news media here uh, last week concerning uh, violence in our community and the need to end the code of silence. I want to thank uh, Commissioner Womack for coming down tonight and talking about being safe in our community and uh, the fact that we all want to feel safe in our community. And um, I think it's... Uh, you know, many of us saw the news earlier today, which is, is an ongoing investigation where a five-year-old child was, innocent child, was shot three times. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable for any of us. None of us want to live in a town where any person, let alone a five-year-old child, has subject to, you know, careless violence. And so we need your help. Please help us. Please help us all feel safe in our community. Help us stop this. If you know somebody that's, that's done something wrong, Stand up, do the right thing. We need your help. Our, our, our men and women in law enforcement, you know, they're out there every day trying to, to solve these crimes, but we need you to, you as the community in Grand Rapids to, to be a partner in that with us. And, you know, we'll continue to, to, to do the best we can to, to, be, to, to carry out uh, the job of being a police officer. Sometimes it's not perfect, but I know that they care. They care about the community. They want, they want to solve these crimes, but they can't do it on their own. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Leonard? I'd just like to thank everyone for coming out and for the comments that were made this evening. DeAndre, I'm, I'm hoping that if you're still in the room and that someone from staff connected with you to clarify some of what I think you heard earlier today about that um, housing committee, because I don't think, I think we need to clarify that a little bit more. Um, <laughs> and um, thank you, Commissioner Womack. I, I was hoping that the young gentleman was going to speak to. Um, <laughs> but thank you both for um, coming out and, and sharing about the concern that you have. Um, as, as my colleague, Commissioner O'Connor, just mentioned, um, it's something that's um, the violence that's happening in the community is heavily on our minds. I, you know, I thank the um, city manager for 
making sure that every time there is an incident that he's reminding us of the data so that um, we know that we still are in a safe community. But at the same time, um, when a five-year-old is getting shot, that's a huge concern that we all should be alerted to and wanting to um, um, do the best that we can to try and resolve some of the violent acts that are happening in our community. So thank you um, for coming out tonight. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, City Clerk. Uh, just to bring everybody up to speed on the election process that less than a month away, so reminding um, the voter citizens and voters out there that November 5 is election day, but um, you anybody can, for any reason can get an absentee ballot. We've already mailed out 16,082 ballots, and we've received 3,437 of them back. So um, if you have an absentee ballot, please return it. Um, just having a ballot does not cast a ballot, so please... Uh, Make sure you get that in, and if you uh, want to know more about the ballot and see a sample ballot, you can go to mi.gov forward slash vote, and you can see a, your ballot and get all your information. Thank you. Thank you for that reminder. And City Manager. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and uh, Commissioners, for your work tonight. Thank the public for coming out, as well as the staff for uh, their work in preparing all the items for both uh, commission deliberation and public comment. I want to also um, echo um, comments earlier about community engagement around policing and make sure that we have a safe community and, and echo what we said earlier about those who uh, want to uh, report, but perhaps you're afraid of um, retaliation from someone in the community or whatever your perception is about law enforcement, there is a way to do it anonymously, and that is through Silent Observer. And we would invite you to uh, share any information that you have about any criminal act. It's not right to remain silent. Uh, the number is 616-774-2345 for Silent Observer. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. And I'll end with... Uh, a couple shout outs. Uh, the first going to our chief. Uh, I want to thank our police chief. I was able to spend some time with him yesterday and again today and I know that um, he cares just as deeply and is just as concerned and I know has an open door policy. So if you are in the community and uh, you want to connect directly with him, I know that he's willing to do that and uh, in his leadership with the department and in partnership with our law enforcement, he's doing a lot of great work in the community to build relationships, which we know is key to getting to uh, making sure that people feel safe reporting. Uh, so, Chief, thank you for your work and your leadership. Appreciate that. And then earlier today, we were able to celebrate a couple other departments uh, who received some national awards and recognition. So I see our treasurer here in the, in the front, uh, Mr. John Globinski. Congratulations again for that incredible award. And I know that there was a big team behind you that helped make that happen. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Becky Jo Glover in 311. And I know Commissioner Moody already talked about 311. Uh, but a lot of what we were recognized for this morning with those two awards, uh, her team was instrumental, instrumental in making happen. So thank you both for your service. Uh, congratulations again on those honors. And with that, we are adjourned. Have a good night. <laughs>